Hey guys, Lance here. It's been a while since I've made a video. Um, as I know, you all loved my honey video and have let me know hourly and daily how much you love my opinion on that company. I thought I'd make something a little less controversial and that is Node.js. However you feel about that, it's probably a little bit better than my opinion on that honey crime app. But that said, let's just jump into this and uh, let's go ahead and make uh, an HTTPS uh, server using Node Express. And uh, we're gonna add a couple extra features in there for the next tutorial. So some things you might be wondering why he's doing it, you'll eventually know and I'll speak about it. So this way you know when you can add something or not. But uh, anyways, uh, less talk, more work. So let's go ahead and jump into it and um, let's start coding. So. I like to use Visual Studio Code, and as I do use Visual Studio Code, um, I suggest you do it depending on your OS and how you like to install things from binary, or you could do an APT install on it, um, or again, by code, uh, grab the GitHub uh, source for it. But nonetheless, um, I'm going to be using that during this project, so you'll see that it's free. Uh, I like it because there's a lot of features in there. Um, and additional add-ons you can add for syntax highlighting, like an IntelliSense to help you uh, write things on the fly, which I'm gonna mention as they appear um, so that you can see them um, and point out why I think Visual Studio Code is useful, especially for uh, node development. Um, there's a lot of built-in features that are great. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it um, and uh, let's start coding. So. First thing we need to do is create a project, right? So as we need to create a project, I'm in my folder. I have a project folder. You could do whatever you want. Um, you'll see there's a folder called keys, right? Let's just ls keys real quick so you see what's inside. This is important because without these items, we're not creating a secure web server. Um, and uh, anything HTTPS you're gonna be doing or secure socket layer, you're gonna need these. Um, so you could go ahead and use uh, something like CertBot, which is from Let's Encrypt. It's very simple to use. Uh, if you use Apache, it's very easy. Um, and there's other ways uh, for it to authorize like through DNS. Um, but anyways, go ahead and download that. If you have not used Let's Encrypt, let me know in the comments and I will make another video of um, how easy it is to go ahead and uh, do that basically so that you too can um, have these certificates that are uh, verifiable. Um, but uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and clear this out. And uh, let's make a, a folder called, let's say, test. Okay, uh, let's make, yeah, real fancy, right? Make their test. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into that test folder. Um, so now that we're in there, if we ls, nothing's in there, right? Right, so since we're using Visual Studio Code, let's do CODE, which is the binary for it to easily access it, and then we'll call it server.js. And that's important uh, because this is literally the server and it's our whole app. Uh, you could call it app.js or whatever you want, but in this case, uh, for this purpose, we're going to just call it server.js. Um, and as you see here, we have our open window for our code. It's ready to go. But before we can do any of that, we need to install the things that Node needs. I'm assuming you've already installed Node, you know how to use NPM, um, but if not, uh, we can make another video on that. But while we have this open, uh, let's go ahead and do uh, sudo npm install. And again, you may not have to do sudo depending on how your system is set up, but I'm going based off of a normal Ubuntu install. Um, so we'll just figure that's what most people are doing. But um, nonetheless, we'll go ahead and do sudo npm install. We're gonna need express. We're gonna need HTTPS. We're gonna need FS. And we're going to need, oh, I already typed express. Um, and that's basically it. Express, HTTPS, FS, and let me think, what else we might need here? Um, I'm gonna say that's about it for right now. Express, HTTPS, and FS that I can think of on the top of my head. But uh, let's go ahead and type those items in and you'll have to authenticate, again, depending on your system. And we went ahead and did that. So now if we ls, now we have those node modules. Now let's just ls node modules to see. Bunch of project folders in there, right? Now those are all needed. Don't delete them, don't remove things, don't play with it. Um, you need all of those items because they make up those projects. So let's go ahead and clear that out and ls, okay? 
So as you see, we still don't have our uh, server.js file, right? And that's because we never hit save in that. So if we go ahead and click save, like so, now you'll see that it's saved and shows the path to where our file is. Now that's important, especially when we're doing our keys. Um, and if you remember, if we do ls period slash, there's our keys. That's important because that's where I've kept them. So now if you went ahead and closed this, for instance, and you went back here and typed ls, now you'll see that server.js file. So let's go ahead and do node server.js. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, we actually want to do code server.js, pardon me. Okay, so there we are. So we need to define some variables that we're going to need here, right? So our first one is going to be fs, and we're going to require actually fs. I'm gonna just leave it as so. Um, because uh, easy to remember, easy to use. So what we're going to need to do now is uh, start getting the requirements for the certificate for uh, the HTTPS server. So first thing we'll do is constant private key, right? And this is going to be FS read file sync. See, now, as you saw, with that IntelliSense type feature, it knew some of the features in this module and what I can do. And as you see, it even gives you some information of how to use this product, um, which is fantastic. So in our case, since we're down a couple of directories or one directory where our keys are, we're gonna do period period slash keys slash and then PRV key.pem. That is one of our uh, key files, uh, well, the private key file that you must have. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw the UTF-8 in there, right? So we have that. Now we're going to need to uh, make the certificate here. And we're going to do fs.readfilesync. And you could just tab to make that automatically type there for you. And again, period, period, slash keys. And then we're gonna do cert.pem and here as well, utf8, um, oops, eight, right? Okay, and then last one to make this up is gonna be a const, yay. And this is going to be the chain file, so fs.readfilesync, and then keys, and then we'll do chain.pem, pem, and again, uh, utf8, and there we go. And now one last thing to make up this credential. Uh, so we'll do const. Uh, and I should be uh, warning you, you may not always wanna put in the word certificate or credentials. Um, you know, they could confuse you in the future, but again, just for this video, we'll just do uh, credentials, right? So then equals, and then let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and put our key variable here. So that's gonna be private key comma, that comma is important because we have another thing coming underneath it. And then cert, which is gonna be certificate. And then our last one, CA, gonna be CA. Now, mind you here, I didn't put another comma, right? That's because I have nothing else to type underneath there. Now, just because it's nice to do uh, comments and stuff in your code, we'll just put requirements for certificate for HTTPS. Oops. HD, ugh, we're all over today, huh? HTTPS server. Okay, so that's what all that is. And we need to change that to semicolon. Whoop, my bad. All right, so that's basically the makeup of our certificate here that we're going to need for our server. Um, so let's go ahead and now make the uh, requirement for the HTTPS server that we're going to eventually call out. So constant uh, HTTPS equals require, and then we're going to require the HTTPS module as so. And then also let's do the variable for express and require express as so, as we did for HTTPS. Now these are both modules that we installed, right? And so now we gotta be able to use uh, express, right? So we'll go ahead and make a variable app equals express. And in our next project, you'll see why we're doing it like this. There's a purpose to this. It's not, well, it doesn't matter. So, and then we'll go ahead and do a var server 
All right, and so now we actually create that server. So create server, as you see there, and then we're going to use express, which we defined right above, which is app, right? So now let's go ahead and uh, create the HTTPS server itself with the credentials. Now, I told you, why am I putting server in HTTPS server? Next video, it all makes sense. So let's do HTTPS and then call it server here. Um, and we're gonna do HTTPS as so, and then create server, right? And then credentials, and then app, because we're using Express. And so that is the base of that. And now we also need to put a, a variable for the port. Now, most HTTPS runs on 443. So let's not mess that up and continue on that path. So var port 443. So now we need to do something, right? We have those variables that is all required and also go ahead and hit control S to save just in case. Um, so now that we have that, that is the base of creating the server, right? But now we need to publish something, give something. So when you access port 443 to actually do something. So let's go ahead and do an app.use and then uh, we're gonna need to do uh, express.static and then we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna make a folder called public. And that's where all of our public documents are gonna be, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. And then let's go ahead and also do, now keep an eye on what I'm doing here. This is important. So the request and here, okay, like so. And what we're going to do is then uh, start sending a file, right? We want to send the index file because you need an index file. And when you go to the main page, you want something to show up, right? You, you just don't have nothing to show up. So what we're going to do in our public folder is we'll have the index file. So the way we do that is send a file, right? So we'll go ahead and do send, send file. And now there's many ways to do this, but we're going to do it like this and say basically off of the directory. So we'll do the money sign here, bracket, underscore, underscore, directory name. This is using node to be able to get that out. Nothing we did fancy here. And then slash public, because that's the folder we're going to create shortly. And index.html, because that's the file we're going to push out to everybody. Let's go ahead and end that here. Okay, so what we've done is say, hey, we have this folder public and we're gonna also have uh, this item here, which is going to send out the index file, which is inside a public. Now, again, like I said, our next video, this is all going to make sense why I'm doing this. Um, so keep this project because the next video you're going to be able to use it and I'm gonna show you how you can change, you know, like a folder that you would put like slash JS for your JavaScript files instead, we could rename that to something else and have it go into your node module so you don't have to have a duplicate of a node module that you compiled um, and just make a call to it. Um, and also not let people know that, you know, you're grabbing the file out of the node modules folder. Um, it all makes sense later on. We'll get over that and talk about that later, but let's just go brief. But I just wanted you to understand why we're doing this the way we're doing it. Uh, the next video will make sense. So now let's go ahead and do the HTTPS server. Again, this is came up because we have it defined up above as so. And then we need to listen uh, for this port, right? We made the server, but now we need to listen for it, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, because without that, you're not going to be able to have any kind of data come in or out. So we'll go like that, right? And then uh, let's go ahead and have a message to let us know, hey, our server is running, right? So let's do a console log and do something like this. HTTPS server is current, whoop. It would be good if I could spell currently running on port 443. Now you could not put 443 and just uh, you know put in the variable port and it would put in the port number. That's probably a good way of doing it in the future. But again, just for now, this is what we're doing. And then we need to kill this guy with a semicolon. Okay, so here we're basically again setting up to send a, a file in our public uh, folder. Here we're listening to the server on port 443 because we've defined that there. And again, this is why I like Visual Studio Code. I clicked on the variable and highlighted where it is. 
like so. So this is really nice to have. This is great to see visually so you know where everything is coming from. Um, so, and as you see, I click public. There is no variable public, right? But port, there is, and it's there. So it's nice to be able to see this uh, quickly and easily, um, which is great, you know, like here. We know that all of that goes to that variable, um, which is good in case you ever have to rename a variable, you can visually see where all of it existed. But now that said, we'll go ahead and make sure that that's saved. Go into our terminal here, right? And LS, make sure it's there. Now to make sure everything did update, we could just cat and then server.js. Everything looks like it's there, what we typed. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. And then now we need to make dir public, right? And as you see, we now have that folder called public. Now what we can do is do nano, and whether you like this or not, that's up to you. Um, and you could do something like um, public and then index.html. So now this allows you to use the web editor. You put hello world, you know, and then hit uh, control X and then Y to save and then enter and it's there. Now, how do we know? Cat public index.html, it exists. But if you would like to do something cool and why I recommend uh, Visual Studio Code, we could just do code public index.html, have it load into Visual Studio Code, get rid of this hello world. And because I have a boilerplate here, which is great, I can go ahead and hit enter and it put in this whole great boilerplate for us. And then we just say HTTPS server, right? Just say that simple let's get rid of this empty script um this empty style sheet just again most of this we don't even need because we're not doing much here but let's just do a quick h1 and then b tag and then say hello world like that because that's what everybody does anyways hit control save we could go ahead and close that we already have that there so we can see now just again up arrow key until you see the cat let's see if that all changed it did great let's clear that out now depending on your settings and whatnot you might need to do something like this sudo node which is to run the node application and then server.js all goes well, it looks like it's working. So now let's go into our browser and see if this is working. So HTTPS, local host, as so, and what do you know, hello world, it is running. And as you see right here, it tells us that it's running. Now, what if you go ahead and hit enter? Nothing, right? Refresh again, the server's still there, right? Now, if you did localhost slash hi, nothing there, right? So that's one great thing. So you might be saying, well, how do I have my server running without, um, you know, keeping this terminal? You know, I don't own this Linux server or whatever. It's a VM somewhere else. Well, I hear you. So let's go ahead and con hit uh, control cancel. Let's go clear it. Okay. Now what you could do is sudo node server. Now, first of all, let's make sure that the server is gone. It's dead, right? Okay. So server.js and then ampersand. That's the and sign. Hit enter. Okay, hit enter again. Now if we hit reload, it's there. Hello world. Now you might be saying, well, Lance, um, how do I kill it in the future? Well, you could do something like ps aux and then uh, pipe grip uh, node. Let you know and find it, right? Look for, as you see here, v VS Code uses node. so. You gotta be careful. And that's only because I have uh, an add-on installed. Um, so that's why you see all this node stuff. But look for your uh, root right here, this node server. Look at the timestamp for it. Um, and right now it's 5, 11 p.m. So here, what we can do is kill it, right? So you need this PID, which is the ID for it, the process ID, and it's 31047. This is going to be different on everybody's machine. So if we do uh, sudo kill and 31047, right? And check our hello world, it's dead, right? So now you say, well, what if I go and PSOX grip again? 
maybe it's still running. Well, you could do that, but as you see, you do not see it, but also it says plus one terminated and it killed our uh, pseudo node server, which we ran originally. And we can also test it again and see that. Now you could also run a net stat and see if that port's being used, but um, no need for that. So as you see there, that was a simple way of creating an HTTPS server using Express um, and uh, the HTTPS uh, module in general. Um, our next video, we're going to show you how to dig into WebRTC um, and do stuff like what we're doing at Twixel.com, um, which is important and we like what we're doing at Twixel. So if you go to Twixel like that, you have the ability to start a conference and what we're doing here is trying to do web conferencing in the web without uh, the need for downloads or anything like that. So that's coming. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is reemployed.com. That's another uh, pet project I've been working on. And that's for freelancers and whatnot. Um, and this is to help people find freelancers as so. Um, and uh, the other thing is uh, to hopefully find work, find a job is a, a new search we have. Got to fix the CSS on that. But as you see, you know, we're trying to get every kind of position uh, you could think of here. But um, also, you know, find what you're looking for, find the work where you want it, remote work possibly, who knows. But um, nonetheless, you can join for free, register and uh, get going as a freelancer or a company. And um, yeah, so trying to help people out and create a platform that you're not wasting and giving so much money to, let's say, Upwork and Freelancer, which is the whole purpose of uh, reemployed.com. Uh, we only take 1% where they're taking 20% plus having a membership in certain amounts of bids. We have unlimited bids, none of that BS stuff um, there. So if you're interested or want to post a project that you need help with or something, that would be great if you could sign up. Um, we'd love it. Um, you're helping out the community, especially in a hard time right now. Um, it would be great for everybody. And, you know, obviously we'd be thrilled too because we're trying to run a site that doesn't make people have to use those terrible sites. Um, I actually lost money using Freelancer because I didn't uh, verify in a certain amount of time. They actually kept my money and killed my account. Um, and I have still yet to get my account back from them. But um, nonetheless, it is what it is. So anyways, guys, um, if you're ready for the next uh, uh, video uh, that has nothing to do with WebSockets or HTTPS servers, please let me down below. If you'd like me to cover something else, love to know. Um, I just thought I'd do uh, Node because that's something I've been playing a lot with lately. And I thought, well, maybe people know this, maybe they don't, I don't know. Um, but uh, also another way to learn can't ever hurt. Maybe you learned something new, maybe you didn't. Or maybe you could tell me something better way to do it. Let me know down below, I'd love to know. Um, so yeah, anyways, without further ado, have a good day, good night, good morning, whatever it is during this pandemic. Who knows what day and night it is anyways. Um, so anyways, take care guys, see you soon. And uh, let me know what you think down below, for better or worse. Bye.